Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to uh, bale some square bales to turn into silage. Uh, so I've got my uh, my crone baler out here, the Big Pack 1290 HDPVC, whatever that stands for. Um, and this baler has the added um, uh, a bond silage tank thingy. I, I think that's what that thing is up there. So we need to get some of that and and use it and see you know see how how that works. So let's see here. Um, but I I still don't have enough money to get the extractor. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna sell our cold storage to get a little bit more money. We were gonna I'm gonna I was gonna do that anyway. So let's do that right now. I'm I'm trying to get stuff done without taking loans if at all possible. So we'll get nineteen thousand dollars for that. Goodbye cold storage you were a great idea but you just don't work in with that many pallets okay and then we're gonna buy another easy shed like this to put over here but we're not gonna do that right now because i can't afford to do it right at the moment okay so that gets us thirty six thousand dollars um i don't think uh these cr these crops did reappear when i logged out and back in too by the way um what was I going to say? Okay, yeah, here, let's uh, let's take a look. That, that's new. That wasn't there this morning. It's a disc harrow. Uh, but anyway, what we're looking for is this guy right here. So that's 34,900. Um, <clears throat> I mean, we can, <laughs> we can barely afford it. Uh, there aren't any more contracts. I did all the fertilizer contracts. And there weren't weren't very many. And last time I checked, uh, there's an there. Well, there's one there, but it's not. That isn't gonna amount to much. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we kind of need it to do what we need to do, but I also need some bond silage too. How much is that gonna cost? Let's take a look. I think we find that in here, and that is right here. So that's three thousand dollars, yowzers, for that. We might need to take out a temporary loan. I, I mean, I just don't know of any other way I can bring in some more cash right now. Just trying to think. We could sell this again. I mean, I bought it and haven't even used it yet, but I'm not going to I'm not going to make silage this way. So, let's see how much could we get for that? Probably not a lot cuz I already bought it used. We could probably get around six to seven thousand for it if we took it into the shop. Yeah, I, I don't think I want to use this because I don't have a storage shed for those types of bales. Plus, you can only do up to two hundred twenty centimeters, where as with the extractor, you can do the large two hundred forties. So, if we sell that, that'll pay for the bond silage, and um, also get us. A little bit of extra cash on hand. So I think we're going to do that. We'll go ahead and take it down with the McCormick here. You know, if if you could only look into the future, right? And then I never would have bought the thing in the first place. But I just didn't know at that point in time that that's the way things were going to play out. So it is what it is. We didn't spend a ton of money on it in the first place, though, so... I mean, we spent enough on it, but yeah, I, I just, I can't think of anything reason off the top of my head why I should keep this. I bought it for, for my hay, not for like contracts or anything, because with contracts, you know, we'll just borrow their equipment. So yeah, let's take it, let's take it down and sell it. And then that way we can buy some bond silage. Now I, I think that bond silage will last quite, quite a while. Um, it's not like the the feed pallets, the mineral you know the f mineral feed that we buy and consume a whole pallet in just two feedings. I believe this will last quite a bit longer. If I'm hopefully I'm correct about that. 
Now we do have to take a few trees down, but in my experience with taking these elm trees down and then taking them down to the carpentry shop, you know, we get like $500. <laughs> it's just not really worth it, you know? Not really worth it. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, we don't need to repair it. If we paint it, we'll get just a little bit more money. Okay, so we'll get $85.98 from it. And let's sell it. Okay, so that brings us up to $42.242. That's a little bit better. And that's enough for us to buy the extractor and a pallet of bond silage. But yeah, things are tight, man. I mean, if I have to take out a loan, I will. I, I'm. We gotta do. We gotta do business. But I'm just trying to not do that if if I can't. Now, if I can't, I can't. You know, that's just the way it is. The problem too with taking out those trees is, then I also need to lease a forestry mulcher or a stump remover, and you know that's going to cost probably more money to do that than I'll get for the trees so it's just not probably just not something that I can afford to do right now we might have to wait until April after we do the you know the first hay cutting of the computer farmers and then we'll have some cash to work with for stuff like that okay so let's go into here and we are gonna purchase the extractor And we want the one that'll do the square and rail, round bales at the maximum, their maximum sizes. Okay, foil color. Uh, let's go with black because why not? And looks like that's it. Okay, all we can do for customization. So we purchase that and then we want to go to here and we want to go to here. And we want to buy a pallet of bond silage additive. Okay. There we go. Now, I don't, we don't actually, well, yeah, we can hook this up to the McCormick. And we'll take it over to where we're going to create the, the tube, the silage sausage, except for it's going to be a square tube. That's it, no lines or anything. Okay. This has like its own. I thought this had like its own little motor on it. Because it's not PTO driven. Huh. I don't know where the motor is. There's this business, but that doesn't look like a motor to me. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. Okay. Well, anyway. Let's go ahead and run this over to the hay sheds. Okay, so I think the way this thing works is it... Um, as you feed the bales into it, it starts to... kind of creep forward. So I have to kind of consider where the best place to put it is. We don't really want it in front of any of these guys because we have to be able to get in there. Uh, you know, to get the hay and stuff out. So probably somewhere over along in here is going to be the best, best placing. And maybe even starting like right here-ish. Okay, so start engine. No, that's, wait, what? All right, there is an engine on it. Oh, 
Oh, there it is down below. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. Do I have to be... Holding is not allowed while the tool is attached to... Wait. Okay. Do I have to unattach everything from here? I mean, I know we're not ready to use it, but I'm just kind of curious how we're supposed to do it. Enter vehicle. Oh, we get on this thing? Uh, where are we? <laughs> Unfold <coughs> bail wrapper. Toggle cruise control? Really? Stop engine. Oh, it moves. <laughs> wow, okay. That is weird, man. Okay, I think, you know what, though? I think I have this... Uh, do I have this the wrong way around? I don't know. Okay, well, let's just leave it here for now. And when we get, you know, start getting our bales, then we'll... Then we'll see if we can figure it out. Okay. That was funny, man. I was inside that thing and we couldn't even see me. I'll just park you right here for now. Okay, now this guy... Um, I guess we need the telehandler. To pick it up over the forklift okay so I think what we have to do is lift this up by the tank and does it give us an option to like fill it no maybe this can't go high enough Okay, maybe what we have to do is put it on the ground and then fill it from the tractor. Like you do, you know, with like the fertilizer and some of that kind of stuff. Yeah, refill baler, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, we've got a meter down below by the speedometer. Okay, so R for refill. Oh, wow. Maybe that is going to use that whole pallet. Uh, I think it's going to use the whole pallet and then some. Hmm. Well, I guess now it's a question of how long will it last? Are we going to get like a half a tank from this? Yeah, we got about a half a tank. All right, well, let's just run with that and, you know, just see how long it lasts. Now, I guess the other thing I need to take into account is... I don't know that we want to convert all of our hay to square silage bales. That's going to be a lot. Um, so let's just, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's maybe start with, what do you think, 10 maybe? And then, you know, see where we're at with the, after that. Oh, I forgot to put those fertilizer thingies back in the in the silo. That was left over from my um, contracts that I did. Let's just dump those back in there real quick.
That one didn't have much in it, but this one's, I think, a full pallet here. Just set it down. We don't have to stay with it. Still pouring out? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we're shooting for 10 bales. And we want to make sure that we are on 240, which we are. That's the largest bale. Okay. Whoops. Now I guess the silage, bond silage stuff just applies automatically because I don't see any option to turn it off or on. Yeah, it's using it. It looks like it is using it at a very slow rate though, which is good. I mowed around the borders of my new fields. Because why not, man? More grass for us. Okay, yeah, that usage rate is great, man. It didn't even use 1% of it for that first bale. I'm good with that. I don't actually know how far my property goes over by that house. We have to be careful not to drive on this field because we own it now and that means we'll damage the crops. I gotta, I gotta work on my head tracker because it doesn't like to. It stops that it won't let me look any further than that. That way, when I turn my head to the left. But I, I haven't even attempted to do anything with it yet. It's still just the default settings. So the bond silage is supposed to increase our yield. With silage additives, you can increase your yield, right? So, not sure how much it'll increase it, but it's got to be worth it, I would assume, or people wouldn't use it. Um. Okay, yeah, let's go this way. We'll get this little corner done first. I'm not sure how many bales I've actually done yet. That's either the third or fourth one sticking out right now. I think. Problem is that end of the field is too far away for it to, us to see if there's a bale laying out there. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Get this little strip here. And then we'll swing back this way. And get the rest of this stuff in the corner. Get out of the way, man. 
for trespassing. I'm just going to run you right on over. Oh, actually, I know how we can tell. If we go to here, we've produced three bales so far in this session. Okay. So we're looking at all three of them right now. It's just because the grass around the outskirts of the new field is really thin, um, you know, meadow grass. So even though it looked like a big long swath, there wasn't actually, it wasn't very dense. Got a couple more little spots here to get, and then we'll be done with this corner. There we go. Okay, now we'll start going along the outside edges here oh I forgot to put my pickup back down I really like this baler though, man. I'm glad we picked it up. This was actually, I don't know if you guys saw that episode or remember it, but this was actually an impulse buy. <laughs> it was, but I have no regrets, man. Not any at all. Especially now that we've decided we're going to make the largest square silage bales. And now we have this baler with a bond silage tank, you know, so just really kind of worked out really good for us. So we'll get these last um, these last two rows and then we'll kind of see where we are on the bale count. I don't I don't think we have 10 yet but we're getting close. My guess is that we could probably get by with just one 240 centimeter uh, silage square bill for the mixer. Because we were putting in one and about a little over one and a half of the, the smaller round bills, but these are quite a bit larger and they've been made with bond silage. But you know, we won't know, of course, until we actually try it, so we'll see. All right, so. We have, here, let's spit these out. Whoops. So we've made nine. All right. Let's, uh, let's get one more. And then we'll try out the extractor. Oh, crap. I hit my, my crops there. I forgot all about that. <laughs> oh well. Let's not do it again. Okay, so that'll give us 10 bales to try out. I'll just leave this here. And I'm going to use the telehandler to move them over there.
<laughs> okay, I think uh, I think five bills is our limit on these guys. Woo that's heavy. Let's see how we do going down the hill here. There is a there is a heavier weight that I could get for this. I've said this before, but this is this is such a useful machine, man. It really is. Okay, I'm gonna put all of these over here. Yeah, here, actually. Okay. Let's just drop them all there. Now it seems to me like you f you probably feed the bale in this side and it pushes it out this side I think does it say which direction it goes in that would seem to be the rear not that that means anything necessarily The thing is, is once we get it started, it's, I think yeah, it's kind of stuck there until it's finished with the tube. Maybe, maybe not. Um, all right, enter vehicle, start engine. Which way's forward? Okay, that's, that's forward. All right, but you, you'd feed the bales in this way and then it would push them down the rollers. So yeah, I think I I think I have this pointed the wrong direction. So what we're gonna do? Oh, this is funny. <laughs> it's too bad they didn't have like a little place where your your player could kind of stand along the side, you know. So what I think's gonna happen is it's gonna start the tube here and then it's going to push the whole kit and caboodle that way so we'll kind of point it maybe in this direction okay hopefully I'm not wrong about that we're going to find out here real quick So I think we feed it in on this side. Yep. Oh, that's cool. All right, that's the first one. Okay, let's start feeding the other ones in. I guess they're supposed to go in the square way. I mean, if we were doing this for reals, that would matter. I've been putting them in the long way. I wonder if I got a stack going on the bale fork and just drove it up there if it would suck them right off the fork.
That is really cool, man. And keep in mind, too, I mean, this is something we're just going to do on occasion for our own silage use. This is not, we're not going to do every single bale all the time this way, because, of course, that would take forever. Now, can I get back in this and still steer it a little bit? Oh, I can, because I wanted to point it that way a little more. That is really neat. I love this machine, man. This is cool. <laughs> okay. So what would happen if we threw two bales on top of it? Let's find out. We'll probably break the thing. Oh, yeah, see, it starts pushing itself back. All right. Looks like I can get away with that, but it doesn't feel like I should be doing that, you know? Definitely not in the real world. Oh, I wanted to look at something else here, too. Why does it say that bale is 6,500 liters? That should be 9,000 liters. Uh, are we... Oh, did we not set this to the right? Hold on a second. I thought it looked like it was shrinking those bales. No, that's just 6,500 liters. These are supposed to be 9,000 liter bales. What's going on here? Do I not have my baler set right? Well, we can't look at one of these unless we pop them out. That says 8,000 liters there. Hmm. Whoops. Okay. What does this say? Oh, so maybe it's, it must have to do with the type of material it is, because it is 9,000 if it's straw. Um, all right, hold on. I could have sworn I set the baler to, to the 2.4 size. I mean, that looks like a 2.4 size bale. It's 1.1 tons. Yeah, my bale size is... It's at 240. Because if we hit it again, then it... Well, I think it has to be turned on. See, that's the 180 centimeter, the smallest one, then the 220, and then the 240. So I guess it's just because it's grass. I, I didn't know that, you guys. I thought I thought they were all 9,000 liters, but apparently that's not the case. Okay. Well, now I learned something new. Because these definitely look like the big boy bales. Okay. I mean, I, I think they do, don't they?
Here, you know what? I'm gonna just do a little fudge here. I'm gonna go late, set this down right next to the hay bale that we popped out and see if they're the same size, dimensionally speaking. Yes, they are. Okay. So it's just it's just the grass, I guess, is not as dense as hay. That's 8,000 liters. This is 6,500 liters. But why is this 465 kilograms, and that's 1.1 tons, but it's less liters? Because there's more volume, but the hay is lighter? Because, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Okay, well, whatever. We know we're making them the right size, so... It does look like it gets smaller when we put it on here, though. What I will what I will do is once these are done fermenting, I'll come back and look at them and see if anything at all has changed on the the liter size. Okay. Well, I'm gonna pick up the rest of the bales that we've made so far, and um, then I I'm gonna decide whether or not I want to make more of these, or if we want to turn the rest of our hay into just the normal round silage bales. Um, and put them up for storage for sale at the end of the year. So I'll just, you know, I'll have to kind of make that decision after, uh, but I want to get these all made first and then we'll see where we're at with them. So I will bring you guys back with an update here in a little while and we'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm back and I have uh, loaded all the bales on here. I, I tried the, the bale fork here and it doesn't, it <clears throat> doesn't really work any better than the uh, the bag handler. Uh, what what it did was it pulled the whole entire stack. I had a stack of four, uh, three, four. Yeah, four on here. It pulled the whole stack up, but then everything fell over and got all tangled up, and it wasn't a pretty sight. <laughs> so uh, I think that uh, moving forward, the bag handler works at least as good, if not better. So anyway, all right. So we have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 bales in there. So I made a couple more. And so now uh, what I want to do is I want to just see how long this will last us. Because, um, well, yeah, let's just see how long it'll last us. And we might be able to get through the whole rest of the year with this, or maybe we won't. I don't know. Uh, but it'll at least give me an idea of how many of these we need for our own cows you know, in a year's time. So we'll start with this and then we'll adjust as we as we go along. Okay, so now what I think I need to do here is I need to, I think it's just unload bales and then I believe it'll seal it up. Pick up object, switch hand tool. What happens if we get inside of it? Unload bales, fold bale wrapper. Pretty sure it's unload. Okay, so let's press R for unload. Oh, that is cool, man. I can even steer it, too, while it's doing that. So it's got, like, a little pusher thing in my doodle. <laughs> That's neat, man. What a cool machine. Very cool. Okay, so, yeah, that gives us 13 bales. And then, like I said, we'll see um, how long those last. And then if we end up needing to make more, we certainly can do that. Look at this thing, man. This is cool. Doesn't go very fast, though. Okay, so let's fold this up. And then, you know, when we when we build our new shed... It's not giving me the option to turn the engine off. Oh, are we having that same problem we had... with the uh, mobile field repair unit where I couldn't see the thing to turn the engine off? It was the enter key that was having me push. The motor's like right here. Well, for Pete's sake, maybe we have to 
reconnect to it with the tractor. What's up with this game and not being able to turn engines off? <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, let's um let's get in the tractor and hook up to it and then we'll uh Hopefully we can Oh, actually, I wonder if I can connect to it with this. Yeah. Okay, so if we go here, unfold bale wrapper. No, I don't want to unfold it. Toggle steering mode, all wheel steering. Oh no, that's for the telehandler. Yeah, it's not. It's not giving me an option to turn off the engine. So the way I had to deal with that last time is I had to actually log out of the game and back in, and then it reappeared. Really weird, man. Anyway, yeah, I like this little machine. This is really cool. Okay, so yeah, the rest of the bales we're just gonna bale up as normal um, using the round baler. And uh, it's still my intention, at least for this year, to make the round silage bales, put them in our storage, and, and use those for selling at the end of the year. Uh, we're doing pretty good on hay for now, so I don't think we need to make any more hay. Well, actually, you know what I might do? I might, I might turn the, the rest of this field into hay, which means we're going to have to tet it, but that's fine. I got a tetter. Yeah, I might turn the rest of this field into hay just to put a little bit more in the barn so we have it. And then the field across the way there, that will just turn into our typical round silage bales uh, for selling. So I think that's what the plan is. But guys, uh, we are probably, as usual, way over time in this episode. So I'm going to let you go here. When I'm finished with my, my hay, there's a couple of other tasks that I want to accomplish before we move on. Um, I want to get this field plowed and expanded. So we're going to do that. And then I also want to get those trees over there out of the way and kind of smooth um, this area out over here on the other side of the cow barn. So we can also turn that into a small, small little hay patch for now. Now, it's not going to be that per way permanently. This whole area will eventually all be for animals, but... You know, we're, this is the, these are all the animals we're doing this year, so we might as well make the rest of this land as productive as possible. However, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with. Yeah, you know, the more I think about this, I'm not gonna mess with this little plateau here because that's kind of the footprint for the larger cow barn when the time comes. So we may not really need to do any significant landscaping here at all. Just plow it and then plant some grass. Yeah. Okay, but I still want to get those trees out of there. So we'll So the plan for the next episode is get those trees out of there, get this little section over here plowed and get that field plowed and expanded. Okay? So uh, with that, I'm going to let you guys go here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Woohoo. And <laughs> if you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.